Well, we are a day out from Michael Cohen's testimony, and the media are still desperately trying to spin this into something useful to help Democrats in the 2020 election. Cohen actually ended up clearing Trump of several wrongdoings. And notice that I said wrongdoings and not crimes, because none of these things are crimes, except for maybe ordering Cohen to lie to Congress, which makes no sense in the first place. I'll explain why when we get to that. So catch and kill is a method that exists when you're working with a news outlet in this specific case, it was a AMI, National Enquirer, David Pecker, Dylan Howard, and others, where they would contact me or Mr. Trump or someone and state that there's a story that's percolating out there that you may be interested in. And then what you do is you contact that individual and you purchase the rights to that story from them. I was involved in several of these um, catch and kill episodes, but these catch and kill scenarios existed between David Pecker and Mr. Trump long before I started working for him in 2007. Okay, so it doesn't look good that our president is out banging porn stars and then paying them hush money to keep quiet. Personally, I'm one of those people who doesn't care what you do in the privacy of your own bedroom. However, the problem comes when you're spending money during a campaign that isn't officially reported. We saw this with Barack Obama who didn't properly report money that was spent during his campaign. But did he get impeached? No. He was, however, fined $350,000. Most people don't even know about this, though, because the media never made it a major news story, meaning that this entire scandal is really a great example of the media's completely inconsistent application of rules and principles. They clearly downplayed this story when it was a Democrat president and are now manufacturing outrage over it because it's a Republican president. What Cohen said during this portion of the testimony proves that Trump was paying hush money to porn stars and other women for decades. And in fact, Cohen confirms that Trump had been paying off Stormy Daniels long before the election of the campaign began, meaning Trump wouldn't even have to report this payment. Case closed. Questions have been raised about whether I know of direct evidence that Mr. Trump or his campaign colluded with Russia. I do not. Much like the media and the Democrats, Michael Cohen has zero evidence of Russian collusion. He even said that from his perspective, Trump didn't even want to win the election, that he saw it as a marketing opportunity. As I pointed out yesterday, I don't buy this story. And the reason is because Trump campaigned harder than anybody else. He was having giant campaign rallies right up until the day before the election. Whereas Hillary Clinton skipped several states and stopped campaigning well before the election. Beyond that, Cohen denied that he had ever been to Prague. And this isn't new news. We've heard this before, that there's zero evidence that he was ever in Prague. And that's a pretty huge blow to the now infamous Trump dossier because it hinged on the fact that Michael Cohen was in Prague to pay Russian hackers. You may remember that a couple days before the Covington Boys fake news story, there was the BuzzFeed fake news story about Michael Cohen being ordered by Trump to lie to Congress. The BuzzFeed story claimed that Robert Mueller had hard evidence that Trump had ordered Michael Cohen to lie to Congress. Too bad for BuzzFeed, Mueller's office put out a statement the same day stating that the story was completely false. Fast forward to yesterday and Michael Cohen is testifying that, quote, I lied to Congress about when Mr. Trump stopped negotiating the Moscow Tower project in Russia. I stated that we stopped negotiating in January of 2016. That was false. He said, our negotiations continued for months later during the campaign. Mr. Trump did not directly tell me to lie to Congress. Cohen then laughably goes on to claim that it was actually Trump's body language that instructed him to lie to Congress, which is kind of strange because the BuzzFeed article claimed that they had written proof that Trump ordered Michael Cohen to lie to Congress. <laughs> even stranger is the fact that this fake news story persists, even though Trump Jr. testified before Congress that deals lingered with Moscow up until June of 2016. Why would Trump order Cohen to lie, but then tell Trump Jr. to tell the truth? It doesn't make any sense. A lot of people have asked me about whether Mr. Trump knew about the release of the hacked documents, the Democratic National Committee emails ahead of time. And the answer 
is yes. In July of 2016, days before the Democratic Convention, I was in Mr. Trump's office when his secretary announced that Roger Stone was on the phone. Mr. Stone told Mr. Trump that he had just gotten off the phone with Julian Assange, and that Mr. Assange told Mr. Stone that within a couple of days, there would be a massive dump of emails that would damage Hillary Clinton's campaign. Cohen claims during his testimony that days before the Democrat National Convention, Trump was given special back channel information straight from WikiLeaks about the hacked documents that were about to be dumped. A quick Google search shows me that the DNC was held between July 25th and July 28th. The major problem with this tall tale from Michael Cohen is that Julian Assange was out promoting the release of these documents on June 12th. And then on June 16th, he actually tweeted out offers of early release to media outlets. Seeing as how everybody knew about these documents, how could Trump have been getting secret back channel information about the release in July? And for that matter, isn't Roger Stone being accused of getting secret back channel information from WikiLeaks in July 18th? None of this makes any sense. If everything that Cohen is saying here is accurate, that meant that Trump and Roger Stone had less information about WikiLeaks than the general public. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you like my content, please consider donating to me on PayPal. You can also support me on Patreon or Subscribestar. You can find the links in the description or in the pinned comment. Thank you.